what's up it's your girl joy back with another video and so today in this video i sound a little sick because that's not because i am because some unfortunate soul made me sick and i never get sick anyways happy holidays merry christmas to you and your family but in this video we will be talking about the five different things that i learned as a sophomore in college I made a video like this for my freshman year so definitely check that out this is the first part of a two-part series the second part will come up come out after I'm done with my sophomore year of college so if you're not subscribed to me and you're not following me on Instagram what the heck are you doing with your life here on this channel you'll never know what I publish next because I do a variety of things I do interviews I do stuff related to Korean culture I do commentary I do beauty college fashion lifestyle you name it I do it and so Definitely subscribe for that and follow me on Instagram at joy.routed. So let's get into the video. I want to put this out there first. When you are just starting college, like me, I'm only a sophomore, you don't know exactly like what's the best schedule for you. And sometimes you don't always get that choice, especially if your college is impacted, has a lot of people, and doesn't have a lot of classes. So sometimes it's really hard to figure out what is the best schedule for me. And you have to try a few times to get that best schedule, as I know from personal experience. Tip number one, allow yourself more than 15 minutes in between your classes. Now, when you do this, um, like I did, I had four classes on two days a week and I had only 15 minutes in between each class. I thought this would be really beneficial because it would make my day go by faster, I could get out of school before two, then I could not waste any time like I did the previous years. <clears throat> like the previous year I had like a two hour gap and I only watched YouTube videos most of the time so I wanted to avoid that. However, this past semester, I realized I don't like only having 15 minutes in between each class. This depends on how big your campus is, but if you go to Cal State Long Beach, you can get to classes for the most part in 15 minutes, but you are running, you are, you are pace walking, you are riding a scooter or a skateboard, or you are panicking because you're going to be late getting to class. It is doable, but it is really hard, and I'm have iron deficiency anemia and so this took a toll on me I was like <sighs> every time I got to class my face was red this and that I just felt like my whole day was rushed plus since I didn't have a, an hour gap or a 30 minute gap I did not have a designated time to eat and a lot of my classes did not allow me to eat in class and it was just a distraction even if I tried so I would have to wait until two o'clock to eat lunch and it was really hard I'd be starving the whole day and then when you don't have proper meals at the proper times you eat more than you actually should because you're just so hungry you feel like you have to replenish what you didn't eat but it just ends up making you fat and whatever so tip number one is to allow yourself more than 15 minutes and also the other thing is that sometimes professors let you out late and you are gonna have to rush to get to that class it's really inconsiderate of that professor but sometimes it does happen and it's just it just overall sucks I just I just wish I chose more time in between classes especially because there's some events that happen during the day during the lunch hour and there's like booths that happen that are like giving flyers or stuff you can learn about more clubs during lunch hour and during periods but if you don't have like more than 30 minutes to spare then you can't do any of those things because you're in class. You have to get to class, and that's your main priority. So if you don't want to feel rushed, allow yourself more than 15 minutes in between each class because you will spend the majority of that 15 minutes walking to class. Tip number dos, or two, or hana du. Tip number two is do not take two writing intensive classes during the same semester. Only do this if you have to, like if you're an English major or whatever you might have to do this you can't avoid it but if you don't have to do it then don't do it because let me tell you I took four classes this is I took four classes this semester I'm a journalism major which means I do a lot of writing I took the daily 49er class which is writing for articles for the paper I took a women's studies class which was based primarily on readings and writing essays on those and so it was really writing based I took another journalism class which is writing based too I had to write a four main articles and a bunch of smaller assignments and so I took a political science class too but the only writing I did was on test day so I was taking basically three classes that were pretty much writing intensive and 
requires writing any I consider any class writing intensive if most of the work is or most of your grade is based on your writing and essays and articles and it was really hard for me I did this to myself in high school as a senior I took almost all writing type of classes and I was writing constantly and when you do that it makes you feel like you hate writing and you don't want to write ever again I'm, I'm literally taking a hiatus from writing from articles for like at least a year probably and I just it just makes you tired of it that's why your counselors tell you to diversify your classes you don't want to take all majors or you don't want to take all GE's because if you take all majors it gets pretty much monotone and it gets really boring and tiring and you might exhaust yourself but if you don't take if you take all GE's then you're not satisfying your major requirements at all so you want a balance of this and I just don't recommend doing a lot of writing intensive classes because even if you're good at writing it will tire you out and you will get so sick of it when you have multiple pages due you have a four eight page essay you have two articles due in a week let me tell you it's not fun especially if you like quality work <laughs> don't do it to yourself and my women's studies class was upper division too, so upper division tends to be more work and harder. So tip number three, um, I feel like this is kind of common sense. I feel like you learned this like in high school. But my tip number three is to write your notes out. Don't type them. So when I was a freshman in college, I was so excited by the fact that I can have a laptop in class and I can type my notes because you don't get that same opportunity in high school. And so I would type all my notes in all my classes. The thing is, I, I did well. I got all A's my freshman year, but I feel like I didn't retain any information. When I look back, the only thing I remember is my honors class, really, about Heimann von Kleist, um, a German scholar or German writer. And the part of the reason why I didn't retain anything is because I was only learning to pass the test, unlike I used to in high school where I would learn to learn. And because I wasn't writing my notes down like I used to in high school, I just didn't retain any of that retain any of that information and all the notes I took on my laptop in Google Docs, I never looked back. I deleted all those files and I never looked back until it was the test day. And so what I decided this year was I wanted to try something new. So I bought myself a cute little book, notebook, and I started writing all my notes down. And I wrote notes down for every single class. And some of my classes even had presentation slides where I wouldn't have even needed to write the notes down because it's already provided to me in Beachboard. But I still wrote them down. And what I learned is that I retained so much more information this semester and I still know everything that I learned and I probably will still lo learn, know all those stuff after because I wrote my notes down, whether it's political science or in a women's studies class. Like, I remember all of that, and I feel like that helped me be really successful in my classes. Where political science, I'm not a poli sci major. I know a lot of history. I'm decent at government. I got all A's on my tests. I was even recognized for it in class with a bunch of other people. And part of that happens because I spent the time to write my notes out. I looked at my notes when I before and after tests and it just helps you remember. I feel like when you write your notes down, you don't have to study as hard because in your brain, if you go over it a few times, your brain already registers that you wrote it down by hand and it's that memorization, hand writing that goes together and so I feel like when you don't write it by hand you have to study and practice reading your notes more and harder than if you write it down. Number four. So this not, might not apply for every school but for Cal State Long Beach save your money and go to the food pantry. So I only went to the food pantry once this semester. I wish I'd gone more times. There are a few limits of how many times and how much you can get at the food pantry but you don't have to be homeless or you don't have to be like broke with no food I mean all of us college students are struggling in some way I guess some of us aren't but a lot of us are so I never wanted to go because I felt like I was taking money or I was taking food and resources from somebody who needed it more than me but um, then I started to realize that this is a food pantry is there for any student. I mean, you could be the richest student, and it's there for you. Yes, it's there to help people who don't have money, who don't have food. It's there to fill a need, but they still limit you. It's not like you can take endless stuff. And I realized that, hey, like, I'm struggling financially, too. I don't have all the money in the world. I'm starving. I'm hungry. And I don't got all that money to buy food, too, because campus food is expensive. I just looked at myself, and I was like, well... I'm paying money to the school like other people are too and so it's like 
this is for everybody and I stopped feeling guilty about that and I wish I had adopted that mentality more like earlier on because let me tell you I have like cup of noodle soup every time I go to school because you know your girl poor and you know you know your girl don't got time to cook in the morning and so but they have that at the food pantry and I wish I would save myself all those dollars and got it for free there if you're hungry the food pantry doesn't open until later in the day I want to say like after five but save your money and go there if you if you really need it and sometimes they have school supplies too tip number five is something that I kind of mentioned in my last video but if it's possible take 12 units and space your classes on two different days during the week now this is an ideal schedule I wouldn't go anything below that because you would be very off track on graduating um, most times people do 15 units a semester and that's doable I've done 16 um, and I did okay. I don't. I would never do that again, though. A lot of counselors will tell you to do 15, but if you can, if you have AP credit or if you take classes during the the breaks, winter and summer, then you can definitely do this. I would plan it out. Talk to your counselor about it. Um, so I took 12 units this past semester, and I did school on two different days, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I hate school, but this was like the best type of schedule so far in regards to the amount of units I took and how many days I had school. And so. The reason why is because I felt like I, when I had the days off in between class, in, in between school, I felt like I could sleep in. You know, I could rejuvenate myself instead of having to wake up in the morning again to go to school. So that was really nice. Taking 12 units was definitely a lot easier than 16. It just felt like I had more time to do other things. I didn't feel like as rushed. It would be, have been better if I didn't take the daily 49er class, though, I'm going to be honest. I just feel like... Taking 12 units allows you to have a more balanced life, and I think that's something that every college student tries and should strive for. I know I try to strive for that every day, but I usually fail. And I just liked it, and I liked that it allowed me to work more days during the week because I am a type of person that doesn't like to work on the same day as I go to school. So I was able to work three days, go to school two, and have two days off from school or work to like just plan things and stuff. And so I think that 12 units is really beneficial. It's it's not hard. Um, it depends on your classes, definitely. Uh, but for me, it was definitely doable. So that is all for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm going to have content out like a lot of days while I'm on winter break. I'm going to take full advantage of that. Um, but yeah, I help me get to 300 subscribers, y'all. I've been like at 239, 240 for like the longest time. If you didn't know, I have a PayPal link, so if you want to donate to this channel to help support it, get better equipment, the lighting of this video could be better, this camera could be better, uh, so many things could be better, and yeah, so if you want to help, it will be in my channel art, or it will be in my description down below. So, I love you guys, and bye!